since 2003. This is the Sports Source, East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Brought to you by Junk Be Gone and the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Source. Happy to have you with us. Uh, we're going to be talking plenty of Tennessee football today, a little bit of basketball as well. But the Vols had an open practice yesterday, which gave everybody a little bit of insight into what's going on over there. And then, of course, everybody has their sources who are peering behind uh, window behind walls and peeping through windows to see what's going on behind the scenes when those practices are closed. We'll, uh, we'll throw that into the mix as well. So plenty of football to talk about today. Let's get right into it. First segment of today's show brought to you by the Garza Law Firm. If you watch any amount of local TV, you are bound to see ads for attorneys that you've never heard of. That's because a lot of these attorneys are from Memphis, Chattanooga, some from Birmingham. They want you to think they're here in East Tennessee, but they're not. Marcos Garza and his law firm, they are here in East Tennessee, have been for years. This is a part of the local community. Local issues call for a local attorney. You should call Garza Law Firm or check them out at GarzaLaw.com. All right. I want to welcome in the uh, round of panelists we have today. We have somebody else waiting in the wings. But first, we have former Vol Will Overstreet right here, and I'll get an email from somebody. We have VFL Will Overstreet. <laughs> Can't say former Vol. VFL Will Overstreet. Either back one, with us. John. Either Good one. to have you. <laughs> nice. uh, and then we have uh, Vince Ferrari down there from WNML AM and FM. Vince, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. You got baseball to call this afternoon? I do. Yeah, looking for a sweep over the Gators. How already, about that? already won the series. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Very good. And then next to you, Bob Hodge, longtime sports writer in this town, longtime member of the Sports Source panel since show number one back in 2003 when we were much younger men. Back before I had gray hair. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome in, guys. Appreciate you being here. As I mentioned, the Tennessee football program opened the gates at Neyland Stadium yesterday for the first time uh, during spring practice, first time during the Josh Heupel era. And let's just start right there. We're going to get into position by position throughout the show, but I want to talk big picture here. Um, the idea to open it up, we've been saying that you need something to juice uh, excitement, to get fans interested. I, this was done at the last minute, but I think it was a wise decision. I liked it. Anybody have any reason not to open up the practice over there? No, there's no reason not to open practice, especially spring practice. You're not going to learn anything from spring practice if you're worried about competitive advantage of some coaching staff getting leaked something out. It's spring. They don't do stuff like that. All they're doing is working on finding out who's the most talented in certain positions, one-on-one -on -one matchups, looking at how the team competes. So for spring, it's a great time to open up the practice. I've never understood it, why they would close that part of practice off. It's something to build around the team. It's just like at an NFL camp, right? In training camp and in two -a days, you see people out there. They allow people to come look at what's going on. It's part of the fan experience. It's how you connect to the fan base. And so not allowing people to come out there at times, it, it doesn't seem like a smart move to me. Agreed. I've always thought it was interesting that you could go watch the Titans in their preseason camp. You can't go over to watch UT. It's like one of those is worth millions upon millions of dollars. The other one is college. Also, money's on the line. But, you know, the, the, the NFL is so much more serious about that kind of stuff. And yet, no, no, open it up. Let them come in here. And it, it, at the college level, it's almost like you're hiding nuclear secrets. Uh, Vince, your thoughts on them opening up practice? Yeah, and especially because this is the first year uh, staff, they're not doing anything eccentric right now. That's going to take a while for them to build. Like Will said, they're still trying to figure things out and figure out their players. But it, it is positive because the players even, I think, have wanted to – practice and be there in front of the fans. It's something that they haven't been able to experience uh, really in a while. I know Sam Pittman at Arkansas had talked about how he likes the fact that there's a little bit of extra pressure. Granted, it's not a full stadium, but at least you're getting, having those players have to perform in front of other people. And let's be honest, this is about recruiting. <laughs> because, because it was open, it allowed some recruits to be able to go as fans and still be there, even though they couldn't like host them and things like that. Yeah, and Bob, before I get to you, we're talking about how many people were there. Let's take a look at this. Uh, Tennessee put out a video yesterday. There's a shot. Now, they put everybody on one side of the stadium. 
not exactly a ton of people there. I think like at least a quarter of that is media. <laughs> okay, and then you have a few recruits. <laughs> We're all mingled uh, in there. So my question then, Bob, I'm all for opening up. Maybe this gins up interest. Can you read anything from that? Does that worry you at all that, it, you know, people are acting like the pandemic's gone. I want to get out. I want the, they've now got an open practice. It's a new coaching staff and it's not really big crowd. You know, some of that was probably dinged because of the weather. If you're sitting there and you're watching the weather reports all day yesterday, as I was doing while well, I was doing something else, boy, it's going to come. It's going to be bad. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be horrible. So a lot of people probably thought, why do I want to go over there? And then they're going to have to put us all into the concourse because it's going to be thundering and lightning and all that stuff. So I'd say that hurt a little bit. But I don't think a small crowd really makes any, any difference. Um, you know, I, I, to get back to the earlier points of what they were saying, how different is it that you opened up this practice compared to the previous regime, which I think if you open up another practice on a Saturday and it's a no, no bad weather in the forecast, I'd say you'd have more people. But it's also spring, winter's over, we've got other things to do, and football seems like a long way off right now. So I'm not going to read anything into the small crowd Although I would have thought it might have been a little bit bigger, but then I go back to me looking at weather forecasts mm -hmm. yesterday, and it was never good. And it was kind of last minute. Yep, I last think minute. Yep. typically yep. they do Couple plan these out. Yeah. All right. So you, anybody have anything? That they, anybody look at that and go, that that might be a reflection on overall interest level, or do you give it all the caveats that were mentioned earlier? I give it the caveats because I didn't know it was going to be open. Right. I mean, I didn't. I hadn't heard anything. So, I mean, that's kind of to me that it's not publicized and things like that. And if I even Will got a doesn't letter. know about it, it's not. <laughs> <happening>. <laughs> I mean, I got a letter to invite me to the practice, and I just found out about it. You know, in, in mail that I opened late. So, I mean, I, I take it as a little bit of the rain. You got kids baseball. You got lots of stuff going on at different times right now. So, I, I give it the caveats more so than the. I think fans would have come, whether they're fa you know on board with hype on the new coaching staff. I don't think that would represent that. I think they would come to see it more so, whether uh, more announcement of, you know, that, that's going to be open. Okay. Bigger concern will that be with the looks like after game three? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be a good day. Um, very quickly, uh, and we'll talk about the, the positives, negatives of all the speed that they're playing with over there. But from the people who have seen the open practice, from the people who have seen the closed door practices and, and talked about it, the one thing that everybody seems to be stuck on is, wow, they play fast. There was a portion yesterday where they ran about eight plays in 90 seconds. Okay. The, uh, I had a, a VFL text me this week and, who was watching them and said, this is freaky fast, <laughs> was the word. Um, thoughts on the fact that, you know, we don't know how good this team's going to be, but that is a novel thing. It's a different offense. It's also going to see a team playing hyper fast. Is that going to be a small thing to hang your hat on this fall that, okay, it's new, that may get some people more interested than what they would have been otherwise? The fact that they're going to be I playing with I think you can hang your hat on it a little bit. I mean, I think it is going to be novel. And if you're going to be a team that maybe doesn't match up with half your schedule talent-wise, then maybe that gives you a little bit of an edge, something that closes that gap, maybe just slightly, but it still closes the gap. So. So, I, yeah, I think people will be excited about it, especially after what you've watched the last two, three years. Right. I mean, there was a time when Oregon was doing this and everyone was just, can you believe this? Wow, look at this. Then more teams started doing it. But I don't think what, what people I don't think grasp is, yeah, but Heupel does it at that Oregon speed. Heupel does it at a crazy up to, if they're doing it right, if the yeah. players pick it up and do it right, you're playing at a crazy speed. Uh, I think that may generate some interest. I think if they score a lot of points, it's going to generate interest, right? I th that, you know, offense puts the rears in the seats. So right. I think if they're scoring a lot of points, especially after the last few years where you, you, you know, 20, Couldn't do points, anything. 20 points was your max, yeah. right, you were going to get. I think there will be a lot of people that will be excited about it. Whether you're getting beat 45 to 58, you know, that's another thing. But at first here, it's going to be exciting no matter, no matter if you are getting beat like that. Well, it's got to come with the results. You're right, because yeah. if mm -hmm. they're going at warp speed and they put the defense out there in about 42 seconds, <laughs> then after going three and out, then that's an issue. Fans aren't going to get excited about it. I think it's kind of a neutralizer, kind of like a basketball team that shoots an inordinate amount of threes. Kind of if you have maybe not quite the same talent level as somebody else, it can neutralize things for you. 
a little bit. But I, I think another factor is right now they're so simplistic in practice, they're able to go at really fast speeds. What happens when they have to put in more of the offense and the players have to think on the fly and have a lot more to digest and you're going up against in real games against tougher competition? I think it might slow down a touch. We'll talk a little bit later. Uh, found a comment from a, a non-UT coach talking about what it's like to go against the Art Bryles offense, which is basically the system that Heupel runs. We'll talk about what he says is, diffi uh, is difficult for a defense that's facing that. And then we'll also talk about maybe the downside of that offense a little bit more. Uh, but when we come back, let's talk about the quarterback situation. Just overall, uh, how are these guys looking at this point? They're rotating a lot of them. Uh, we'll talk about that next. Come on back on the Sports Horse.